Welcome, friends. We're glad you've chosen to join us today in our continuing study of the book of Galatians, a book that was written by the Apostle Paul to a group of churches that were troubled by teachers that came from Judea, teaching them that in order to be saved, not only must they be ones that accepted the doctrine of Jesus, they must be circumcised and they must keep the law that Moses had given on Mount Sinai. This troubled the churches. It imposed upon Gentiles something that was physical, the matter of physical circumcision. It was that that imposed upon them the necessity of being bound by the law. Was this what God intended? Were these teachers teaching in accord and with what? Jesus intended for his apostles to teach. We must say no. And that was the purpose of this letter, to show that the law and the necessity of keeping physical circumcision was not something that God intended to bind upon the Gentile. Here in this third chapter of the book of Galatians, Paul tells us, beginning at about verse 7, that uh, the scriptures teach that the just shall live by faith. Then uh, Paul quoted from the Old Testament and said, And the law is not of faith, but he that doeth them shall be ones that are justified in them. Paul taught that if a man was going to be justified under the law, he would be one that would be so by keeping the law. But then Paul shows that as many as are of the law are under a curse, for it's written, Cursed is every man that continueth not in all the things that are written in the book of the law to do them. Now, let that statement sink into you. Paul said, Cursed is every man that doeth not all the things that are written in the book of the law to do them. But it wasn't Paul that was speaking. He was quoting directly from the book of Deuteronomy. And that book said that if you miss in one point, if you fail to keep in one measure, you are under a curse. For the law said, Cursed is every man that doeth not all the things that are written in the book of the law to do them. Now, how many people do you suppose Keep that law and didn't miss a single point. How many do you think? Well, we know babes did not because babes are ones that kept that law perfectly. No, they didn't keep the law. They just simply were in an age of innocency. You see, sin is the transgression of law. And when a babe is born in this world, we ask the question, is he a sinner or not? Well, what law of God has he violated? That determines whether a man is a sinner or not. That the law is transgression, or sin is the transgression of the law. Why, you know, friends, a baby hasn't committed sin. He's not under the curse. He's in a state of innocency. And then there are some that never mature in their mind. Their body does, but their mind always has the mind of a babe. They, too, are ones that do not transgress, for they do not know the difference between right and wrong. But all the rest of us, those that reach the point of uh, accountability, where we can distinguish between what is right, what is wrong, what is good and bad, every one of us, my friends, do that, uh, that at one point or other is contrary to the will of God. For Paul wrote in Romans, the third chapter, and verse 23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Remember? In John, the eighth chapter, there were the rulers of the Jews that brought a woman that they had taken in the very act of adultery, and they brought her to Jesus, tempting him, testing him. And they said, now, teacher, Moses in the law said that those that commit adultery are to be stoned to death. We took this woman in the very act of adultery. Moses is stoned to death. What do you say? 
And he didn't say anything for a while. He just stepped down and wrote on the ground. We don't know what he wrote. And they asked him again. They continued to pelt him. What do you say? Moses said, stoned him to death. You see, they were trying to put Jesus at variance with Moses. And then after they had exercised all of this against Jesus, Jesus stood up and he said to them, let him, that is without sin, cast the first stone. And he sat down and wrote again. And those accusers of the woman began to turn away from the oldest to the youngest till all of them left. Nobody to accuse her. And Jesus said, Woman, where are your accusers? I have none, Lord, he said. Jesus said, I don't accuse you. Go, said no more. Now, why did these individuals turn and leave the scene? Because of the fact that Jesus' point struck home to them. Let him that's without sin cast the first stone. There were none of them that were without sin. And the Bible said that all that are of the works of the law are under a curse, because cursed is every man that continues not in all things that are written in the book of the law to do them. And how are we going to be removed from that curse of the law? Can we be removed by the keeping of the law? No. The matter of seeking to keep the law doesn't remove the curse. It is that that only aggravates the curse because the longer we live, the more things we do that's contrary to the law. Ah, but there is a solution, and the apostle gives us what that solution was. He said that Christ has become a curse for us, for it's written, Cursed is every man that continueth not in all things that are written in the book of the law to do them. And then... Of Jesus, he said, that Christ is become our curse. For it's written, Cursed is every man that hangeth upon a tree. Christ became a curse for us. You see, the problem with these Judaizing teachers that troubled the Galatian Christians were that they were seeking to impose upon these Gentile Christians the necessity to identify with physical Abraham to embrace the physical act of circumcision, to embrace the law itself. But the record declared that this is not the way that Abraham was justified. The writer teaches in the book of Hebrew, Habakkuk, the second chapter, that the just shall live by faith. And Paul quotes that in Galatians, the first chapter, and says, And the law is not of faith, but he that doeth them shall live in them. My friends, we are to be children of Abraham today, but not that we seek to duplicate the matter of circumcision and the keeping of the law. Have you considered the fact that Abraham was not justified because he was circumcised? It was because that he had already pleased God and already attained righteousness that God gave unto him this matter of uh, circumcision. For the Bible teaches that before Abraham ever received the ordinance of circumcision, that the record says, and Abraham pleased God, and it was reckoned unto him for righteousness. And then there's something else you need to reflect upon. And what you need to reflect upon is this. This is that Abraham wasn't justified upon the basis of keeping the law. Well, Abraham was dead 400 years before the law was ever given. He wasn't justified because he kept the law. You see, these Judaizing teachers were seeking to impose upon these Gentile Christians the necessity of physical things, of becoming one that embraces physical uh, acts of circumcision, and that they embraced the law as it was given to Abraham's seed. But the Bible teaches that it wasn't Abraham being physically circumcised that justified him. And it's not that we are to become Abraham's children, though we are to become his children, not by acts of physical 
acts of circumcision and keep of the law. But we become uh, children of Abraham by walking in the faith of Abraham. Remember, when we look at Abraham, Abraham was uh, a person that dwelt in a large away land called Ur of Chaldees. And God came to him with this instruction, Abram, get up from your father's house, from your family, from those you love, go to a place I will show you. And Abraham did. And it pleased God. And it was reckoned unto him for righteousness. And then later, we find that the Bible teaches that near the end of his journey on this earth, that God had given him that son as he promised he would, Isaac, that that son had grown up not perhaps to maturity of adulthood, but a good-sized lad. And God had said to Abram, take your son, Isaac, whom you love, and you offer him as a burnt sacrifice upon a mountain I'm going to show you. And Abraham uh, attempted to do so. He went so far that he had the dagger in his hand, rose it up, and was about to take the life of his son. And God said, Abraham, do thy son no harm now. I see that you hear me. Abraham believed God. It was reckoned unto him for righteousness, and that faith was that that pleased God. And we must recognize that we are not justified by the works of the law and keeping circumcision, because the Bible says by the works of the law no flesh shall be justified. We are justified by walking in the steps of the faith of Abraham. Now, think about it this way. These individuals in Galatia had already embraced the doctrine of Christ. They had been redeemed, and the tragedy was now they were turning from that that did redeem them and would cleanse and sanctify them to that which could never cleanse them, never sanctify them, never redeem them. And Paul is doing all within his power to rescue them from what they have been deluded to believe. As we think of this, Let's just think about the fact that Abraham was justified by his faith, not by the works of the law. But remember, there is that emphasis, the works of the law. But when the Bible says that Abraham was not justified by works, he is identifying he was not justified by the law. He is not saying that Abraham was justified without any acts of obedience at all that he was justified without any measure of works. James deals with this problem. In the second chapter of James, he asked this question, was not Abraham our father justified by works in that he offered up his son Isaac on an altar? See then how that uh, his faith had wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was recorded, and Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned unto him a righteousness. God had said to Abraham, come out. If Abraham had not come out from Ur, he would not have walked by faith. He would not have pleased God. God said to Abraham, offer your son Isaac upon the altar. If he did not make that effort to do so, to be stayed by the hand of God, if he had not done that, he would not have walked by faith, and he would not have pleased God. God wants us to be children of Abraham, but not physically so. He wants us to be children of Abraham by emulating the faith of Abraham. The Galatian writer in the third chapter, beginning in verse 26, tells us how. You're all sons of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ did put on Christ. Notice that he said, you're sons of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For, you know what that word for means? It means because. He's going to tell them how they were sons of Abraham by faith. For, as many of you as were baptized into Christ did put on Christ. How many put Christ on? Those that were baptized into him. How many do not put Christ on? Those who are not baptized into him. Must one have Christ on? My friend, you know the answer to that. But then, as we look, we find that the passage continues. You're all sons of God. As many of you as were baptized into Christ did put on Christ. And then he continues. He said, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. 
There was neither male nor female. You are all one man in Christ Jesus. Now listen to the last verse of Galatians 3. And if you are Christ, then are you Abraham's seed, heirs according to the promise. Who is a child of Abraham? The one that belongs to Christ. The one that by his faith has been baptized into Christ. My friend, Christ became a curse for us. He took our sins when he was nailed to the cross. But I must appropriate to myself the blood of Jesus Christ. Have you been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ? It is that that can cleanse you. And Romans in the sixth chapter tells us that as many of you as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death, into his blood. And from that you rose to walk in use of life. Why? Because, my friends, when one's been baptized into the blood of Christ, he rises from baptism a new creature. Thank you for joining us today. May God bless you in your study of his word.